Okay, so let's go through an Android Studio walkthrough. This is not going to be exhaustive and it's not meant to be sort of a huge long video, but it's just really an overview of some of the common functionality differences between Android Studio and Eclipse. And just uh, you know, a bit of a look and feel of how the inter what the interface does, how it looks, and how to find uh, common things or common areas of functionality that you'd be wanting to access. So let's get into that. Okay, so I'm going to start up Android Studio. And it will automatically load the project that we were in last, which was the project we created as our sort of more or less test project. So I'm going to close down the tips. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, on the left hand side, firstly, you can notice probably that the structure looks a little bit different than what Eclipse did. Some of the options here are a little bit different. So let's just go through some of those and try and make a bit more room for ourselves. So firstly, the manifests folder contains Android manifest. Uh, file. So if you double click that, the first thing you'll notice is there isn't an option to show a graphical user interface. If you recall in with Eclipse, there's an option for you to sort of do it more with a graphical interface and uh, you know pull down menus and so forth. With the Android Studio, it's all done with this particular file, this XML file, in the XML itself. So keep that in mind. So the contents, the Android manifest file will be uh, identical because this is a file that's packaged with the project. It's just your, you know, how you access it's going to be slightly different. But I don't think that's a big problem because there's lots of other areas that make, you know, make this a compelling reason to use Android Studio. And we'll go through some of those. Next, your source code. And the other thing I want to point out is as I'm navigating down the, uh, you know, the various folders here, if you look up here where it's got my first project, this will change and this shows you the physical path uh, on disk. So if you're wondering where what Java is, for example, Java is actually in a folder that by the name of the project app src main Java. And we can do that at any time. We can just right click that and click on um, reveal and find is what the Windows version is. I think there's an equivalent Mac version. And that shows the Java folder and we can just, uh, holding down my command button, you can see it's my first Android Studio test app source main which of course, going back into it, is app source main. So as you're, you're looking at things, you'll come to things like, for example, the Gradle scripts, and you'll say, well, hang on, there's two build.gradle scripts. But if you look at, them, look at them carefully, click it once in the sort of the root folder, and the next one is in a subfolder. So keep that in mind as well. It's just uh, Android Studio's way to try and compact the number of files so you haven't got you know like a really long listing of heaps of files it's a little bit more compact but essentially it is very similar and of course it has to have the same project files that uh, you know and Android developer tools has so so that ultimately it can build the uh, you know the actual Android project Let's give myself a bit more space there okay so that's Android uh, manifest then same things with the source code you can see I'm just navigating down the package and I can just double click and it will open it. No, nothing different there. That's sort of pretty standard. And as we're moving down, we can go into, for example, the layout. You probably recall those because we've done that, enough of those now in the project. I can double click that. And this is where it starts to get a little bit interesting. And again, I'm trying to make use of my real estate, uh, screen real estate. I haven't got a lot of space because of the uh, size of the video I'm recording, the resolution. So it'll probably look better on your computer. But one of the things I like is firstly, the interface is nice. This updates all the time as you're updating things, which is good. And you've also got this layout here, which is sort of similar to what you had in the past. But if you click on text, it's the bit that I like. You've now got both. Uh, you remember with uh, Android Developer Tools, you sort of had one or the other. This time you've now got both. So as you make a change here, you know it's automatically going to change it there. You notice what happened there too. I can go, if I make a mistake. On the interface, and you can sort of see there, well, first there's a rendering problem, I couldn't resolve it, but it shows the at string. That's a very quick representation to you that there's a problem you know, in the graphical mode, but of course also in the text mode, everything's in red. So I'm just going to undo that change. It goes back and it works again. So everything sort of updates quickly, which I, I think that's a really great feature. And uh, strings, again, much the same as the, the uh, Android manifest. There's no sort of GUI or anything like that. It's just a basic thing. I don't think it's necessarily a problem. It's pretty straightforward anyway to do, to be accessing those. So 
that's sort of the main, main functionality of the interface. It's again largely the same as Eclipse. But let's continue on. I want to talk to you now about the Gradle scripts. Because Gradle is a build tool, and that's what Android Studio uses a lot of. It uses this to build your application. And uh, if we have a look in, say, build the first app build Gradle, you probably notice some things here like the compiled SDK version, the build tools version, minimum SDK version. This is uh, how the Gradle uh, software knows what version to compile your app for. And that's constantly updating all the time. And there's some other files in here. This is your higher level one, which you probably won't need to access. A lot of these things are handled automatically, but they are there if you're a sort of a tweaker or you want to access these tools from the command line or something like that. Mostly you won't need to change a lot of those. Um, we'll just go down and just show you just to be complete some of the different options. You can sort of override options, but as we get into more complex apps, if we have to do that, we'll do that at that point in time. Settings. The one that you probably will want to look at is local properties. Now this is setting an op uh, a variable to the SDK directory, and you can see sort of there in the folder, in the, the folder um, that it's come up with, it's that's this is where the SDK is installed. So if you do ever run into difficulties, you know, you've lost your SDK, you can't figure out where it is, that is the spot to put it. But again, keep in mind that's only used by Gradle, so that it can sort of uh, you know work itself and build your system. But it's a good one to know because sometimes you may run into difficulty and you won't know. How to, access, uh, how to access things. Okay, moving on, structure will become more apparent once we've got a lot more code. So we can go back to, say, Java, open it up, and look at main activity. It gives you a bit of a, a, a sort of list of the structure within that document. That does change, and you can sort of access different things as you want to. It's just a quick way to navigate to get access to things. So another view, if you like. I, I don't normally use that very much. I stick to the project. And down here, there's a couple that I want to show you, Android. This is where you get access to your device, uh, devices and so forth. And you can see that I've got an Asus Nexus 7 connected at the moment, and that's what this thing's talking to. Uh, terminal. Uh, the thing I like about that is when you click on Terminal, this is for people who want to do, use command line tools, it automatically goes to whatever folder this particular project is. So if I have a look at the project uh, folder, you can see that's where literally it's, this project is stored on my hard drive. So it could be quite handy there. Close that. And going over here, the um, event log, we won't go through that now, that's pretty straightforward logging. The Gradle console is where a lot of the output is from the builds. And in terms of building the project, there's a couple of ways to do that. You can just come up here, make project. And again, you've got a shortcut there. And on the Mac, it's Command F9. I'm assuming it's Control F9 on the PC. And that's building away. And then we can go back to our Gradle console. You can see that it's executing tasks and it's built it successfully. Over here to the right, you can also click into Gradle and you can get a list of different tasks that are defined for your app. Again, these are all created automatically. You won't really need to know too much about that, but they're there if sort of you need to, uh, need them at some point. But again, to get access to building normally, you'll probably just be going up to make project or using the, the uh, shortcut key. Rebuilding and clean project in case you need it are there in the build project, uh, build menu. But some of the things that I want to show you in the uh, menu options, Firstly, let's go into Preferences, which is uh, in uh, the main Android Studio menu on a Mac. A couple of things you may want to change. The one that I like is Appearance. It's changing the default to Darkula. And I will have to restart after this. Now you can see, to me, that looks much nicer. So I'm going to restart the IDE now, because it wants to be restarted. Now, I don't know, maybe it's just personal preference, but I find that far nicer to work with. But I am going to set it back now because I think the white's better in a video uh, for video training purposes. But uh, do check that out. I'll just change that back now. That's in appearance again, and just choose choose the, uh, the theme. And you can override a lot of this stuff as well, which I'm not going to bother with now. Okay, just restart again. There is a ton of options under Preferences. You probably won't need to change many of them, but it's just good to know some of them that they are there. And let's close that. Go into Preferences again. Another handy one is Updates. You've got the option here, obviously we can check now and we're probably running the most recent version. 
But if you want to sort of live life in the fast lane, you can go down here to say every canary channel and check. And there is actually a new update. And it says that these are the bleeding edge that are released about weekly. So this is point, version 0.092 we would be installing, whereas the current version is 0.814. So if you do want to do that, I mean, do it at your own peril and chances are things will break. So I'm certainly not going to do that in this course now. I'm going to stick to, you know, what is beta. Um, and if you wanted to, you can go back to stable. But obviously this is still beta software anyway. So stable is effectively going to be beta. So if we do that, we'll probably get the same version. The same version that we're running now. So probably beta is all you need at this stage, but that's there anyway. I wanted to show you that. Okay, some of the menu options that uh, we want to get into. It navigates one. Some of these shortcuts are really quite cool in uh, Android Studio. And that's because it's using the IntelliJ IDEA editor. And uh, I mentioned very early on in this class that this was that original, that standalone editor. I was using that in early 2000. 2002 or 2003 and back then it was good so that's that's automatically incorporated into Android Studio so for example you can see class a file or a symbol and you get various key shortcuts to, to um, you know whatever is appropriate for your platform if you want to look for a class now this doesn't make a lot of sense given that we've only got the one class in the system but I'm holding a command and pressing O and you can start typing you know my and you see what's happening already I've just typed two letters and it's found all the things that's sort of matching that. If we typed in main, as soon as we're happy that that's what we want, and again, what I could do is if I only got one, I can just, I'm pressing the up and down arrow key. As soon as I'm happy, I'm just pressing enter. Well, I'm actually in that class. It's that, it's that simple. So if I go back to, a, to Android Manifest and do the same thing, command O, main activity, bang, it's loaded. Very, very quick way of uh, getting things going. I'll just make a bit more space there. Uh, but some of the other ones, I'm holding, I, went, I did uh, command uh, option O, I type a symbol name, and I can put something like um, hello. Oops. And you notice that's the hello world, that's from our string file. So it's very smart and intuitive, and it's found that way. We can just double click on that, or I could have pressed enter, and it's gone to the definition. This is the definition that's in the r.java file, which of course is automatically created. So anyway, I won't go, go into that in too much more detail, but I suggest you become familiar with some of these. There's lots of these shortcuts really are, you know, a fantastically fast way to get access to things. Lots of stuff in there, and you'll probably, what I'll be doing as we go further in this course, I'll be using some of these, and I'll be sort of mentioning out loud what I'm doing to get to it. But there's some great things in there. The other thing is code. Uh, this is where it uh, creates some code uh, for you automatically and you probably well you did see some of that in Eclipse and some of the previous projects this is where to find some of that stuff as well uh, analyze we probably won't get into that a lot but uh, there's it's there if you need to but we'll leave that for now refactor is something we'll also be doing uh, you, it's something that uh, you know as programmers you do have the need to you know, move things to another class or to copy things or to safely delete it and make sure it's deleted right throughout the project we'll be seeing looking through this more through additional projects or you know further projects moving forward but do check that out as well because there's lots of fantastic stuff in there uh, build pretty straightforward to make the project which we were into before um, generate the signed uh, application package that's uh, what we'll be doing this is that's literally the command that you'll be uh, uh, using to create you know, once you finish ready to upload to the app store so we'll do that look at that later running in you know breakpoints and uh, debugging and so forth are you know, in the run menu the tools option, in case you're wondering, is uh, tools Android is where we find things like the Android device monitor, where we find AVK manager, SDK manager. I mean, they all look pretty similar. But we're actually, in actual fact, you can see here by the folder of the SDK path, it, it is actually the same SDK manager. Uh, I'll actually close that because we don't need that now. But if we go back to the Android uh, virtual device manager, that is different. Now you notice this does look a lot different to what the other one looked like. But the concepts are still largely the same, and I can click on here to edit it if I want to. The same information that we saw in the clips is there. It's just the format is a little bit different. Now, the host GPU, Hexum still works here, by the way. So you can still use all your Hexum projects will work uh, in here as they did before. So if Hexum was working under Android Developer Tools, it'll work fine under Android Studio. And if you want to get into the memory settings, you go into Advanced Settings. 
and this is where you'd be overriding those settings and what I do suggest again I've said this before but just in case you've missed it if you have got memory problems you feel like you've only got four gigabytes or less make sure you do tone these values right down I'd be suggesting if you've got four gig of RAM that should be 512 no, literally 512 or maybe 768 in much less than what uh, you, you should uh, you know, the default's using a lot of your RAM, and this is a common reason for the Android virtual devices to not start. Okay, but essentially it's still the same thing. Nothing much has really changed there. So I'm going to cancel out of that. Just the, the look and feel is different is what I'm saying, but overall nothing much else has changed. Um, and there's lots of these little menu shortcuts here as well. Preferences, debugging, you know, attaching a debugger to an existing process that's running. Uh, a lot of it, will, you'll, you'll see me using this as we go through creating the other projects. But uh, you know, I, I like this interface and I like the way it's set up and I think overall it's a better package. It'll just take a little bit of you, know, you just getting used to it. I'm sure the very first time you used Android Developer Tools you probably thought it was a little bit overwhelming. But as you built the, probably you know, the fourth or the fifth app it became a lot, a lot easier to understand. So this is the tool that we're going to be using exclusively from this point on through to the end of the project. Alright, I'm going to finish this video now and then in the next video I'm going to show you how to import a project from Android Developer Tools into Android Studio and it's a lot easier than you might think.